Hello and welcome to another how-to on We The People, the amazing Civilization 4 colonization mod uh, that's just had so many functions and one of which is a vastly improved trading system. And one of the developers, Nightingale, on the Civ Fanatic forums uh, a while back created a pretty comprehensive uh, post on how it worked. Uh, but what I want to do is just do a little video and just show you uh, effectively what his post says. I'm just going to almost verbatim read out his post and explain uh, how it works. And then we'll just show you a little example in this setup here. I've just uh, created these two cities and you can see that Jamestown is here right near Europe. A great candidate to export goods to Europe. But then we've got Plymouth here. It's on the other side of a, a very large peninsula. It would take an age to get around here. So the best way is to transport the goods over here to Jamestown to ship them to Europe. So we're going to have a look at um, how we might export this valuable gem yield to Jamestown and then maybe expand it out and see how we can export some things back from Jamestown to Plymouth. So here we go. I'm going to tell you what these buttons are. I'm not necessarily going to give you examples of them right now. I'm going to show you that further into the video. What we're going to do is we're just going to tell you what's in each thing. So this button, this checkbox tells you whether a good is being imported or not. This one is export. This is something called the import feeder. And this is something called auto export. The buttons at the top here, this first one will clear every trade route you've got going. The middle one will just tick import all of them and auto export all goods will export everything that you're creating and it will turn on the auto export button. Again, I'm not going to tell you what that is right now. We're just going to show you how it works. So one really good tip is that when you have a city, you kind of want to manage the imports and exports, the needs of the city as you're going. So you don't want to think about what's happening outside of the network. You just want to import whatever you think the colony needs and export whatever it can spare. So in this case, right now, we are creating coffee and gems, and those things are not going to be exported from here. We're going to set, we want to send them over to Jamestown to get sent to Europe. So the easiest way for us to do this is just to hit auto export all. It knows that that's what we want to do. It's going to just keep chucking them out. Now, one thing that we're going to do is we are going to keep a minimum amount of coffee here because there is a chance that we're going to start making coffee ourselves here. So there's a bit of a difference. Every time we're above 50 coffee, it's going to export coffee. It's just going to try and export gems all the time. Now, is there anything that we want to import in this city? Well, probably yes. Even though we have a blacksmith, you can see that we actually don't have any tools and we don't have any blacksmiths yet. We haven't got them from Europe. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import tools. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to say we're going to import them and we want to try and maintain at least 100 tools in this in this colony. When we get over 100 tools, though, we don't want to keep importing tools. So we're going to turn the export feeder on. And what that will do is it will turn off the import button when you're over 100 and it will turn it back on when you're under 75. And it's just a great way to keep everything efficient. we will just aim for that. Uh, we also know that there will come a time when we're going to export these, but we'll come back to that. You could turn on export and it will just always try and maintain 100 and it'll import and export depending on whether it's, it's plus or minus that. But for the moment, we're just going to import tools. That's great. If we hop over to Jamestown, we're going to want to import. Well, we're probably actually, because this is going to be our European city, we could just hit the import all goods. Uh, and for the moment, that's certainly going to do. But we've got a pretty small warehouse at the moment. So for the sake of this video, I'm actually going to clear that. And I'm just going to import the goods that we've got coming on here. So the first one that we want to be sure of is we're going to import these gems. And we don't really have uh, a maximum for these because we're just going to want to sell as many of them as possible. And we're going to want to import the coffee. Now, you can see here we're actually processing coffee. So we probably actually want to maintain at least 100 coffee here. So we're going to do that and we're going to stick the import on and we're going to, because we're trying to maintain an amount, we're going to stick the import feeder on. And then what we're going to do to set this whole thing off, we should have in here a wagon train and all of the tradable trading units, including ships, will have this. Uh, land transport in this case is going to be the best thing because we've got this big peninsula, as I mentioned. Uh, we're just going to hit this button here, the automate transport, and it's going to go off. It's already gone and picked up some gems. Automatically, it's looked at what it needs and it's gone to pick some up. Now, something we forgot to add here is that we also, we can see here that we actually probably are going to have an excess of tools because 
we at the moment we're not really building anything that requires tools we don't have a lot of that and we know that our other city needs it so what we're going to do is we're going to export tools but because we know we're going to be doing some building in here we're going to keep a minimum of 50. and because we're not importing tools here we're going to turn this on so when there is nowhere to send these tools to or there aren't enough tools it's just going to turn this off it's going to make the whole thing more efficient and as you can see here we're not yet over 50 so that's not on it's, it's not even appeared in your export tab uh, we're going to let a few turns go by so you can see here that we now have some tools going because we are now above the 50 threshold that's appeared in the exports tab. I haven't done anything, it's just appeared there. And you're gonna see that it's gonna start filling up the tools in Plymouth and it's gonna go all the way up to 100 tools. It's not gonna go past 100 and that's gonna be great because we're building this town hall. That's gonna work out really nicely for us. And we're gonna let a few more turns run and see how that pans out. So you can see here that the coffee has dropped below 100. So I suspect on the next turn, it's going to pick up some coffee for us. And you can see here that it's picked up coffee. It's going to come and dump this here, and we're going to stick over 100, and it's going to be great. So just to leave you with the final tips that Nightingale himself recommends, think of focusing on a single colony rather than a network. Just tell, you, tell your single colonies what to import and export. Do it for every single colony in your, in your empire, and you'll just start to form these amazing automation links. Try to use auto export instead of export. It's good for the performance of the game and uh, with some more colonies uh, with these mods. You know, you've got the Portuguese, you've got the Russians. They could each easily have 10 plus colonies. You're going to have 10 plus colonies towards the end of the game. You're talking about, you know, hundreds of, of trade routes. So being able to automatically turn them off if you're just exporting and equally using the import feeder when you're importing, it should uh, keep the performance a little bit better. Combine a threshold of zero everywhere uh, with the import feeder and auto export it's actually quite good to distribute yields such as stone and tools automatically because there's an inbuilt function with import feeder which is really clever in that if you have a building that requires say stone or tools or more tools than you've got in your threshold it will temporarily increase it automatically without you doing anything so that can be a really really good way to do that the other really important thing to remember about import feeder is that it increases the priority. So if you've got somewhere that needs the tobacco that you're exporting to Europe because you've decided to build a cigar factory and it's on the way, you put on the import feeder, it will prioritize that over just the import into your into your capital to export to Europe and you'll get your, your uh, raw good that way. And then the final thing to remember is that fully automated transports aren't optimized uh, to use a lot of cargo slots effectively. Uh, this is a problem in vanilla. It's not part of the mod. So speed is important. So smaller, faster transports is best, i.e. wagon trains is very good, particularly if you get the Lewis and Clark founding father. So I know that it sounds complex, but from seeing me do it, it's really easy. Basically, just import everything in a city that you think you're going to need. Uh, Put a feeder on it if you're not just going to send it out to Europe to sell if, you, if it's something you actually need. Export, when you've just got export on, turn on the auto export because it just speeds up the game and don't ever worry about trading again. And this allows you to do some really cool things like you could have a colony in the middle of your, civil, your, your civilization that creates 200 food a turn and you want to distribute that. Uh, that means that you could maybe make that colony to make use of the gem deposit in the Arctic that you couldn't before because it didn't have enough food. So lots of cool things that you can do. Uh, it makes the extra yields and things that you have uh, much easier to manage. And the other thing that we should mention is that with 2.8, domestic demand and satisfying it increases your happiness. And it's a great way to make money. So if you go into a city, for instance, Plymouth, and I don't know, there's a, there's a button here for the domestic market. You can see here that we've already got coffee demand. So, and we've already got salt demand. And so we could add coffee to our import list because we know that we need coffee uh, and that would be great. So lots of things you can do. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. I'm sorry if that wasn't the most eloquent thing. It's a complicated thing on the surface. The UI is held back. You know, it's old. The guy, the, the developers know that. It's not their fault. They're working with what they got. They are considering new options. I don't know if that's something they're going to include in the next version. There's a thread on Sir Fanatics that I'll include in the description about the trade system. And I'll include Nightingale's original post with the tips. So I hope this has been slightly helpful. If it hasn't, then just dislike it. Dislike this video. Just, you know, tear it to shreds. And uh, we'll see you next time.